Hey guys, uh, Mr. B here again, and I'm going to take you through today just a um, simple little video on adding and subtracting radicals. So, topic easily confused, but very important. So, first thing we need to know when we're adding or subtracting radicals is we need like radicals. So, what I mean by like radicals is that we need the same thing underneath the root sign, so what we call the radicand. So if I look at this, root 2, 3 root 2, negative 5 root 2. So these all have to be root 2 underneath the radical sign. If I have something different underneath the radical sign, I cannot put it together. I cannot add it or subtract it. So what I tell my students is to think of X's. I can only add X's with other X's. If I try to add X and Y, I can't add them together because they're different. I have to have X's with X's. I have to have roots with roots that are like other roots. So root 2's go together, root 3's go together. So if I have an example, um, start it pretty simple, something like this. Root 3, or 3 root 2 plus 5 root 2. So very simply, all I have to do is think, well, I have three root twos and I have five root twos. If I put them together, how many do I have? So literally all I do is add these two numbers in front. So eight root twos is now what I have. No different from if I said 3x plus 5x, and I would get the exact same thing, 8x. Or if I said three cats plus five cats is eight cats. So no different. Okay, so that's, you know, it's oversimplification, but it's really, that's all that's to it. There's nothing more to it than that. So let's go to a slightly harder example. So let me just erase this junk. All right, um, how about something like this? So if I have, say, 3 root 2 minus 2 root 3 plus 5 root 2 plus 6 root 3. So I have some like and non like radicals here. So you can see I have another root 2 and another root 2, and I have a root 3 and a root 3. So what I have to do is I have to combine those. So one step might be to um, group them up into you know like pairs. So what I have is 3 root 2 plus 5 root 2 and I'm going to add that to negative 2 root 3 plus 6 root 3. So I group them up. So this might be a step that you could do mentally or just looking at it. So then I have 3 root 2 plus 5 root 2 so that's 8 root 2 plus negative 2 root 3 plus 6 root 3 so that's negative 2 plus 6 is 4 root 3 so after I get that step done I have to think well I don't have any more like radicals so that's as far as I can go it looks like it's unsimplified but that's just how it is there's nothing more to it than you can do than that so that's the other type of question now there's one other type of question that you sort of need to be aware of that makes life a little bit harder is that not not always can we see if there's like radicals because you know root 2 and root 3 are already simplified so if I have something like this let's see so 5 root 8 minus tw uh, root 27 plus root 50 minus 2 root 12 so if I have something like this I have to think 8 27, 50, 12, they're not like radicals. So you might be thinking, okay, well, I can't do anything with it. But in actuality, these aren't simplified, so we don't know 100% for sure if they're like or not. So I have to think of, um, you know, what perfect square multiplies to get me 8? So 4 does. So 4 times 2 is the perfect square that multiplies to get me 8. So I'm thinking, what's the largest perfect square that divides into each of these numbers? So the largest perfect square that divides into 27 is 9. The largest perfect square that divides into 50 is 25. The largest perfect square that divides into 12 is 4. So 4 times 3 is 12. 
25 times 3 is 50. And now we start to simplify. So the square root of 4 is 2. Then I go 2 times 5 is 10. So let me just say that again. Square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 5 is 10. So I'm left with 10 root 2. And then square root of 9 is 3. So that comes outside. 3 root 3. Square root of 25 is 5, so 5 root 3. And then square root of 4 is 2, so 2 times 2, 4 root 3. So now, as you can see, I've got a couple different like terms going on. So really important to keep that in mind. Am I missing? This should be 2 here. You're probably thinking, should be 2. Yeah, it is definitely should be 2. All right, so 25 times 2 is 50, not 25 times 3. Stupid. All right, so now we add. So I'm looking at grouping up my 10 root 2. Erase that part right there. 10 root 2 plus my 5 root 2 plus my negative 3 root 3 minus my 4 root 3 or plus your negative 4 root 3. And then I add those together, so that's 15 root 2 plus then I add these negative 3 minus 4, so it's negative 7 root 3. And I will like to rewrite these sometimes. Five root, 15 root 2 minus 7 root 3. So sorry about the mistake there, guys, but you get the picture. Um, overall, guys, adding and subtracting roots is fairly straightforward. What you need to look for are like radicals. So what that means is you have the same number underneath the root sign, and you have the same index. These are all square roots. So if you have different indexes, you also have to be aware. You can't just add a root, square root with a cube root. So um, hopefully this helps. Good luck, and I'll see you guys in class. Thanks for watching.